Dear fellow redeemed in Christ, grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on this Ash Wednesday. Gunter and George, two 90-something-year-old guys living in the same assisted living facility in Virginia, were eating dinner one time together, and as they started talking to each other, they soon realized that they had once been enemies. You see, Gunter served in the German Navy, World War II, and his job was to shoot down Allied airplanes. George was a pilot in the Army Air Corps, and he flew B-24s and attacked German targets. And so here were these two men, 90-something years old now, living in the same place, sharing a dinner table. And then they realized 70 years before that they had been bitter enemies. And so this conversation that began was probably a little awkward at first, but now they are very dear friends. Enemies who became friends. One of the obscure truths of the passion history of our Lord Jesus concerns two men who were enemies. But because of the circumstances surrounding them, Herod and Pilate became friends. And Luke records this truth in his gospel, Luke 23, beginning at verse 6. And here's what he writes. On hearing this, Pilate asked if the man was a Galilean, meaning Jesus. When he learned that Jesus was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who was also in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was greatly pleased because for a long time he had been wanting to see him. From what he had heard about him, he hoped to see him perform some miracle. He plied him with many questions, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the teachers of the law were standing there vehemently accusing him. Then Herod and his soldiers ridiculed and mocked him. Dressing him in an elegant robe, they sent him back to Pilate. That day, Herod and Pilate became friends. Before this, they had been enemies. And this is the word of God. Herod and Pilate. Maybe we would call them strange bedfellows. I don't know. But they were enemies. But now they were reconciled. But why? Because of Jesus. That's what, in a sense, formed their friendship from being enemies. Now, why Pilate and Herod were enemies, the Bible doesn't ever tell us clearly. Now, both of those men were leaders. They were governing leaders. So maybe there was some rivalry involved, which may have likely been the case. But Pilate was the Roman governor, and Herod Antipas uh, ruled over a territory that included the region of Galilee. And so here were these two men thrust into this situation in history, once enemies, and now they had a connection, and it was Jesus. But let's think about what was their connection with Jesus. First of all, for Pilate. I mean, I suppose in many ways, Pilate had been thrown into a hornet's nest. The Jews had brought in this guy, and now Pilate was going to have to make a decision of life or death for him. And so to Pilate, Jesus was like a hot potato. He was trying anything he could to get rid of him. And so when he heard that Jesus was from Galilee, and that was Herod's jurisdiction... Off he went to Herod, let him deal with him. And for Herod, when he learned he was going to get Jesus, he was rather fascinated because he'd heard a lot about this guy. So here we have these two men, Pilate and Herod, and now suddenly they have some connection. And they became friends. But neither Herod or Pilate in their dealings with Jesus they didn't find him guilty of anything, certainly not deserving of death. But as events unfold here, and we will read those as we go through the Lenten midweek services, as these events unfold, eventually it comes that Jesus is handed over to the Jews to do what they want to do to him, and that's to crucify him. And Herod and Pilate are participants in that condemnation of the Holy Son of God to death. Their friendship developed because of evil intentions. And yet, as evil as it was, 
God used their evil. This is just another indicator how God can even use the wickedness of people to do what he knows needs to be done. And this is another case. So Herod and Pilate, though they became friends, what they were party to in making Jesus die established another friendship. You and God. Remember how Pilate and Herod were former enemies, now reconciled because of Jesus? You and God, former enemies, are reconciled because of Jesus. And yet we know why you are an enemy of God. I know why I am an enemy of God. The Bible is very clear about that. The Bible says the sinful mind is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. So when you and I are born, we are hostiles, which means we're not friends with God. We are his enemies. And to further confirm that fact, the Bible even says about you and me, there's no one who does good, not even one. That's not news friendly. And yet like Pilate and Herod, our natural being is to be selfish. That's how we're wired, to do things that we want to do, even at the expense of other people. And that's what Herod and Pilate did as well. Pilate was, uh, wanted to get rid of Jesus, get him into somebody else's deal, like Herod. And Herod, again, fascinated. It was almost like Jesus was a plaything for him. And maybe he was even thinking, hey, entertain me with a miracle, Jesus. I heard you can do really cool things. But the selfishness, selfishness is a friend destroyer. And maybe you've been in a situation where you've had a friendship and it was destroyed because maybe you got a little selfish and your friend walked away or vice versa. But it doesn't work. And yet Jesus is the complete opposite. He is selfless. And he lived that selfless life. He behaved in that manner in order to bring you to God. The Bible says that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting men's sins against them. And you know why God doesn't count our sins against us? Because he counted them against his own son, the perfect Jesus, the perfect friend. And yet Jesus willingly took those sins on himself. And he was the friend who stepped in between you and God and satisfied God's anger about you and for you. We maybe have had some friends in our lives who have been really good friends. I know people who've had friends and when they were kids, and now that they're adults, they still meet a lot and maybe even hang around with those same friends. I, I think that's a very wonderful thing. Sometimes friends have stuck up for us, and maybe in a little heated moment and difficult times, they've been there speak, speaking in our defense, and we're grateful. But how many of us in this room tonight have ever had a friend who said, I'll die for you, when we should have been put to death. And that individual died instead of us. I bet nobody in here. I'm not a better, but I would wager that none of us have had that happen. And yet, you know what? We're all wrong. Because every one of us in here, whether you're on the organ side or the window side, or standing right here, we have all had a friend who gave his life when we should have died. Because that's what Jesus did for every one of us. He gave his life on the cross. There he became the guilty one. There he became the selfish one instead of me and you. He is the one who became the unfriendly one. And God punished him. And you realize that Jesus was even unfriended by his heavenly father as he suffered hell instead of you and me. And yet this evil friendship that Herod and Pilate forged under the circumstances, that led to the death of Jesus. And yet miraculously it's that death that even paid for the sins of Pilate and Herod. It paid for your sins and mine, the ones we know we're guilty of and even the ones we don't know we've done. Because that's what true friendship does. It's built on love and on selfish love. And that's why Jesus, our truest friend, even made this comment. 
Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. That's what he did. And he says, you are my friends if you do what I command. And that doesn't mean that we're going to be his friends only if we obey the commandments. No, we obey those commands because we are grateful and we cherish the relationship that God has given to us with our Lord Jesus. That he is our truest, greatest friend. And for his sake, you are forgiven. You are declared not guilty. So that we can truly say, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. George and Gunter had been sworn enemies during World War II. And now, 70 years later, best friends. Pilate and Herod, enemies. But they were reconciled because of Jesus. But their friendship was forged for evil. But you and God, former enemies, but now reconciled because of Jesus. And it's for your good. Because the friend who did it is Christ, God's Son, our Savior. And that's not an obscure truth. That is the very message of all God's word. Amen. Please rise for the blessing. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.